I'm Jonah Weiland. I'm the uh, executive producer of ComicBookResources.com, and I am very pleased to present the cast of NBC's The, Pan uh, the Cape. We're going to start with uh, Bear McCreary, the composer of The Cape. There he is. Next up, we have Dorian Misick, who plays Marty Voigt. <laughs> Keith David, who plays Max Miliani. Summer Glau, Orwell. Yeah. David Lyons, who plays Vince Faraday, The Cape. James Frain, who plays Peter Fleming, also known as Chess. Next up is Vinnie Jones, who plays Scales. We've got Martin Kleba, who plays Rolo. And we've got uh, John Worth, the executive producer of The Cape. And Thomas Wheeler, the creator, executive producer of The Cape. All right, now that we've got everybody out here, I want to start with uh, Tom and John. Uh, you guys have seen the first episode now, and I think you guys probably want to know where the show is going from here. So, uh, Tom and John, take it away. The whole thing? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, actually, do we have to keep going? Yeah, the writers uh, just started this week, and I have to say it was really incredible to take this experience and to start sort of building on it. So, hmm, what's happening? Well, uh, Vinny's going to be making a move in Palm City, that's for sure. Scales is going to be, you know, making a move to uh, carve out some criminal territory. I think, I think David, the Cape, is going to be learning... A, he's going to be asked a, a question of, you know, do you wear the cape or does the cape wear you? It's about, you know, you've learned how to use it, but now is, uh, is he going to be able to get Vince Faraday far enough away from the cape in order to do what he needs to do? Um, let's see. Well, Orwell has a very complicated family life, as we see, and that will, um, that will really play a big part in the last, uh, I would say, the last three episodes. Um, it's, this it's yeah, this season. It's very, uh, it's it's super exciting. Those are just a couple little teases there. Yeah, I think one of the other things that um, that is really cool about this show, as you saw from the pilot, uh, we're going to create the world of Palm City. I mean, when Tom first introduced me to this project, I was thinking a lot about the worlds of comic books. Gotham City being, you know, a good example. Palm City is not at all like Gothic City, but it's going to have a look and a feel uh, to it that is unique, like that could come out of the pages of a comic book. So one of the things we came up with this week is sort of creating um, the other side of the tracks of Palm City, which is where the carnival lives. And we're sort of searching for a name of that place. Right now we're calling it Carney Town or Tomb, tomb Town or, you know, something. If you something. have suggestions, you should go to orwellwatching.com and make some suggestions. We're going to be reading that. So. That'd be great. Um, but uh, it's just a wildly inventive um, show, um, and these guys are fantastic. What a cast, so, man. Yeah. 
Why don't we uh, give the cast a chance to speak here, and I guess we should start all the way down with Keith on the far end there, and tell us, uh, tell us what you like most about your character thus far. Uh, thus far, what's not to like? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I love it because he's, you know, he's magical, theatrical, and dangerous, um, and you know, sort of great sense of humor, but. Um, don't mess with Bill, you know? Um, and that thrills me, because, you know, I mean, I've always been fascinated with carnivals and circus and all that kind of stuff, and how it um, can uh, make your life thrilling or not. Vinny, go ahead. I'm just pleased I get another shot at that little shit at the end there. <laughs> Bring it, bitch. <laughs> We have a little writer's room here, apparently. There's, uh, take some notes. Barry, do you want to talk a little bit uh, re briefly about how, what you're going to bring to the show uh, as a composer? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, what you guys are, we, we hope are going to be hearing is a, a really thematic and rousing superhero score. I mean, I grew up on uh, Superman and Danny Elfman's Batman and, and uh, the... I, I, I don't mean to ever put myself in the same category as these people, but... The, the, the score that I look at and say, okay, this is what the cape should aspire to, this is the direction I'm going, is uh, Shirley Walker's score for Batman, the animated series, which is something absolutely... Uh, this was a score that was way ahead of its time and I grew up on and, and to me is, is really the pinnacle of superhero writing because she got to create all these different themes and I'm hoping every one of these actors gets their own musical theme and we get to play with it and... Uh, and adapt it as, as it goes along. So, yeah, the music, I, I think, is going to really kick ass. So We also had a really cool talk with Bear about uh, an opening sequence that, yeah. should, that should rock, rock well, the house. Uh, what I, what I, yeah, we were talking about every superhero project needs a big, awesome superhero main title sequence. And this was, it didn't strike me as something that you guys had spent a lot of time thinking about, but it was, when I got the call, it was the first thing I thought was, a show called The Cape, we got to do a big, you know, orchestral bombastic theme. And, and I think that what you guys are going are, are gonna to hear when it finally is all finished and comes together will be really exciting. Summer, what do you like about uh, Orwell? I drive a Tesla, so that was fun. And uh, <laughs> I'm happy to be bringing some girl power to this group. I feel a little lonely right now. But I think my favorite thing and the thing that attracted me to the role was uh, that Orwell seemed to have unlimited possibilities. You know, she's, she's alone there and she's, she's following her heart and she's not limiting herself and she's not afraid. She's just going for it. So that's what I like best. David, what about you? Um, I think... Uh, for a character like Vince, who uh, comes from a, a very real, real world, Tom sort of created something that's right on the fringe of reality. And um, playing a character that spirals down that rabbit hole as it goes is, uh, is, a, is a great opportunity and just a lot of fun. Yeah. James, your turn. Uh, apparently, having seen this, um, it turns out I'm the bad guy, which um, <laughs> no one told me about. So, I think the big corporations need all the help and support we can give them right now, and I'm proud to be a part of that. <laughs> Doreen, you get to uh, follow that, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh. No, I think <laughs> the thing I like most about Marty is he's pretty. Can't argue with that. Yeah. Yeah. Good-looking man. <laughs> no, yeah. no, and also um, I, think, I like the the that he's caught in between the worlds right now. Yeah, um, it, it leaves him open for a lot of interesting character and story things that you you, you wonder which way is he going to end up going. Is he going to end up going completely to the dark side, or is he going to you know come back and help out his buddy? And I think that creates something really interesting. And it's a character that, as an actor, you know you you love to take a bite out of that. And Martin pretty. Rolo is Cle Martin uh, well, Rolo. I'm the real Marty here, so just remember that, okay? And I am pretty. Um, I guess I'll, I'm really looking forward to it, my character. Uh, right now I'm kind of 
balancing between good and evil myself, but you know, being with Max. But in the end, I want to I want to try to get you guys to forget that Rolo is a little person. Just think of Rolo as a badass. A badass. <laughs> I want to say thank you very much. Thank you. Tom, we don't have much time left, but I wanted to get back to you. You, uh, this may not be based on a comic book, but you are a hardcore comic fan, aren't you? Yeah, you know, this is my love letter to comics. I mean, you know, I would be here anyway. Um, this is kind of a whole pinch me situation, just this, this cast. And um, I grew up, I mean, I guess, I mean, I was more kind of a Marvel guy. I was, uh, I mean, it was, I'd say Daredevil and X-Men, but mostly like Power Man and Iron Fist, if I had to pick out, you know, like the best series, you know, I just love that group. I love that friendship. I love that recent run, um, the sort of David Aja, who did uh, the back cover for our, our comic. Um, getting to meet these, art, I mean, I got, I got an email from John Cassidy, you know, that he would like do the cut. I, I said to my wife, I was like, John Cassidy just sent an email to me, you know? And she was like, okay, that's exciting. And, um, but I was like, this is crazy. So, uh, yeah, and I also think that, I mean, ever, when you're little, I mean, the first thing you do when you're gonna be a superhero is you, you put on a cape, you know, you tie that blanket around. I mean, I know, you know, my brother and I did, and it was, it's just sort of, feels really kind of iconic to the genre, and, and John Worth is showing me a picture of him, <laughs> and I'm glad it's of a, as a child uh, of him in it. <laughs> but uh, it's, it is this a... This is me when I was five years old in my Superman suit. That's my little sister next to me. So it's taken me a few years to get here. Um, I still have the suit. It's in my back pocket. I'll put it on later. <laughs> I think I he's still suit. No, he's, he's, he's still... He's, you're still super. You're still super. Uh, no, so I mean, I, it's... This is meant to be and, and will represent the most sort of grounded comic book world, but we, we wanted a comic book show, you know? We wanted something that hadn't been done, a sort of costumed crime drama. that's sort of a throwback to sort of the pulp era heroes and something that felt kind of iconic, and uh, I think we're on our way to doing that. I think you definitely achieved that. As we uh, finish up, Tom and uh, John, I think everybody here wants to know, are we going to see more fights between Scales and Rolo? Between the cape and Scales? What's going on there? <laughs> I think, I think the audience demands it. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah. Uh, gonna... What was that? 20 bucks on uh, uh, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> you heard that, Vinny? He's right, right there, he's row three. I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. The, uh, the panel's coming to a close, but I want to tell you guys all something. As you leave, you're going to receive a limited edition, Comic-Con edition of The Cape with that John Cassidy cover. If there are, you don't get one here, go to the DC Comics booth. You can get one there. Uh, thank you to the entire cast for coming out here. This is NBC's Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you so much.